Parmesan cheese is as good as gold. Welcome to another positive episode of Good News Next Week. I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. This is the spinoff from the long-running series New World Next Week between myself and James Corbett of Corbett Report, where we realized we had to do more ways we are winning. Parmesan cheese is as good as gold, but first, let's take a trip to the grocery store with a story submitted to us. Again, another Good News Next Week story submitted to us via at Michael Alexis B. France has become the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or wasting food. And we grabbed this from The Guardian. France has become the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food, forcing them to donate it to charities and food banks. Under a law passed unanimously by the French Senate, as of Wednesday, large shops will no longer bin good f- quality food approaching its best before date. That's Euro speak for they're not going to throw it in the garbage. Charities will be able to give out millions before millions more free meals each year to people struggling to afford to eat. Now, this is actually something the grocery store I used to work for here in Portland would do. There was always carts going out to loaves and fishes and other places. The law follows a grassroots campaign in France by shoppers, anti-poverty campaigners, and those opposed to food waste. The campaign, which led to a petition which was started by Councillor Arash de Rambarche, In December, a bill on the issue passed through a National Assembly, having been introduced by the former food industry minister, Guillaume Guerreau. And we do have background links of when this initially was being passed. And of course, as everything in media monarchy, whatever we say and play will be included in the show notes. The law has been welcomed by food banks, which will now begin the task of finding the extra volunteers, lorries, warehouse, and fridge space to deal with an increase in donation from shops and food companies. Supermarkets will also be barred from deliberately spoiling food in order to stop it being eaten by people foraging in the garbage. Dumpster diving, we call it. In recent years, growing numbers of families, students, unemployed, and homeless people in France have been foraging in supermarket bins at night to feed themselves. People have been finding edible products thrown out just as their best before dates approached. Now, we can also include in the show notes, there are documentaries, Dumpster Dive, Dive, I believe it's called the exclamation point, about dumpster diving here in the States and what grocery stores go out of their way to not let you do it. And again, they're just trying to cover their legal butts. Some supermarkets doused food in bleach reportedly to prevent food poisoning from items taken from bins. Other supermarkets deliberately threw stuff away in locked warehouses for collection by refuse trucks. Now, bosses of supermarkets with a footprint of over 400 square meters, 4,305 square feet or more, will have to sign donation contracts with charities or face a penalty. Jacques Ballier, head of Bank Alimentaires, that's the food bank, a network of French food banks, described the law as positive and very important symbolically. He said it would greatly increase an already emerging trend for supermarkets to donate to food banks. Most importantly, because supermarkets will be obliged to sign a donation deal with charities, we'll be able to increase the quality and diversity of food we get and distribute. In terms of nutritional balance, we currently have a deficit of meat and a lack of fruit and vegetables. This will hopefully allow us to push for those products. Until now, French food banks received 100,000 tons of donated goods, 35,000 tons of which came from supermarkets. Even a 15% increase in food coming from supermarkets would mean 10 million more meals being handed out each year. Food banks and charities, for their part, will be obliged to collect and stock the food in properly hygienic conditions and distribute it with dignity. Now, I see, actually, this, this article does actually go on. Overall, a positive thing, but in some ways we file this under our funny, not unmitigated good news because this sounds like it's also bringing in more bureaucracy, more fees, more fines, more regulation, more stipulations. Ultimately, the good is not wasting food. You've heard it said, and we say it here at home, it's like, yeah, wasting food is a sin. It is one of the very fundamental things of of life on this planet, is to not be a wasteful fool. So while I'm not one clamoring for more laws, this is a pretty simple one, and one that at least, as even alimentarius food bank guy said it was one symbolically to get you start to think about the waste and again the revolution starts in your fridge and in your medicine cabinet and you can start to make those choices and you can start to make those moves at home on your own we will include the background articles as mentioned before which goes back to may of 2015 on the guardian france to force big supermarkets to give unsold food to charities 
So we've gone to the grocery store on this episode of Good News next week. Now let's get the cheese, or the cheddar, as the kids say, as cheesed-off Italians swap bank bonds for Parmesan. And we grab this from Russia Today with a story submitted to us using hashtag Good News next week from our friends at 7 Robots Inc., A dairy cooperative in Italy has raised 6 million euros after selling bonds guaranteed by huge wheels of Parmesan cheese. We already have some loans, but after a certain point, the banks don't want to give you any more. Andrea Setti, the financial controller of the Four Medon Cooperative, told the French agency press. The bonds will pay a fixed yield of 5% until they mature in January 2022. The money raised in the bond issue will help the company improve its facilities and promote the thick rind cheese it makes. For Madone is based near Modena in northern Italy. Around 40 dairy farmers supply milk to the company which produces the famous cheese. The company's business was booming in recent years. Production rose to 75,000 wheels a year while turnover hit 24 million euros in 2014. However, when the cheesemaker decided to boost its presence here in the States and applied for more banks... For more loans, it got no answers. Over 95% of companies in Italy have no more than 10 employees and traditionally rely on bank loans for financing. Banks which are still recovering from the 2007-2008 financial crisis are unwilling to provide loans. Italian Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi's government is trying to encourage firms to raise money elsewhere. In this case, the government-backed mini-bond schemes has investors providing funding for six years in return for a 5% yield backed by cheese assets valued at 120% of the bond's value. Several banks already hold hundreds of thousands of Parmesan wheels as guarantees of loans to local producers. Now, there's a handful of comments here on this Russia Today posting, and they note when the crash happens... Better to have cheese than bonds, and that is where we grab our title from Ilya Karakin in the comments says, Parmesan is as good as gold. Our final story on this week's good news next week, we go to the Big Apple. As crime rate continues its decline in New York City throughout 2015. Now, stories in the reports, and of course you got to do the tabulations once the year is over, but there was an article that will, again, source back to the New York Times from December 27th, 2015, but this is posted on goodnewsnetwork.org, where we have been grabbing some good news for you. While news reports throughout the past year raised anxiety that New York City was slipping back into the crime rates of its bad old days... 2015 turned out to be one of the best years ever, and crime rates continued historic declines. The city's police department reports an overall drop of 2% in serious crime and a 13% decrease in criminal arrests. The improvements were obvious even before the year ended. During a December 17th promotion ceremony, Police Commissioner William Bratton said New York City would mark 2015 as the safest year in its modern history as it relates to crime. Over the past two years, the NYPD has been changing their approach to law enforcement and community relations, relying more on problem solving instead of making arrests. Now this gets into a little bit more of pro-cop propaganda, but I think this is the pushback against the idea that cops are under attack and they're being murdered at an alarming rate and crime is raging outside like Bill Hicks said. You open your door and you hear crickets. Where's all this stuff happening? It's built up by a media that wants you to stay inside and be afraid and not really go anywhere. But we see, we can look around, that people are wanting to make different choices. And they're making those different choices at home, and they're making those different choices when they do go outside. So a lot of these things, again, aren't crying out for more regulation and more government and please save us. We make these decisions as sovereign human beings, and we realize it, and we come to those conclusions with each other. And that's a lot of what this work is hopefully about. So I have to say in wrapping up this latest episode of Good News Next Week that that was about all I could find. It's kind of rough out there. And as I know, people commented on the latest New World Next Week. Oh God, that's the second depressing episode in a row. And we talk about the the lack of good news. So again, I implore you, whether you use Twitter or not, you can use hashtag good news next week, but you can always drop me an email, james at mediamonarchy.com. We want to know some of the ways we are winning, and maybe you're sharing something that's happening in your town that isn't on some news feed. And that's, again, those personal connections we're hoping to kind of make with this kind of media.
We'd love your support at MediaMonarchy.com slash support, PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, a P.O. Box, any number of ways you can help support independent, alternative, non-commercial media. And we've been around since 9-11-2005, over 10 years of media coming from Media Monarchy. I thank you so much for watching Good News next week. I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care.